should get underway. So welcome everybody. Uh, my name's Mike, uh, Professor Michael Hickey. I'm the Director of the Centre for Inflammatory Diseases. Uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this part of the presentation. And we'll take you through a little bit of what we do here at the Centre for Inflammatory Diseases within the School of Clinical Sciences at Monash Health Translation Precinct. Let me just share my screen. Uh, let's see, I think it's this one. Are people seeing the uh, presenter view there? Somebody? No, up, not yet. Up yet? Full. Yeah, we can see your slides, Michael. Can we, is that full presenter view? So. Yes. Better. Okay, so we'll start. Uh, this is what I'll talk to you about over the next half an hour and with the presenters. Uh, I'll introduce... Sorry, you. Michael, you need to swap your displays. Oh, damn it. How's that? Better? Yeah, that's better. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So today we'll, uh, I'll introduce you to our centre uh, we'll have presentations from three different laboratory heads within the centre. And then we'll, at the end, we'll have a student uh, Q&A with one of our PhD students from one of our centre, cent uh, one of our laboratories. So I guess the first question I wanted to ask everyone is why study inflammation? What's so important about inflammatory disease? And the main thing is this, that inflammation affects an enormous number of people worldwide. The number of diseases that have inflammatory components to them is really remarkable. Starting at the brain when we have multiple sclerosis or stroke, uh, the cardiovascular system, atherosclerosis or heart attack has major inflammatory components. The liver can be affected by diseases such as hepatitis. The skin uh, affected by a range of inflammatory conditions such as eczema. Of course, joints affected by rheumatoid arthritis and other forms of arthritis. Inflammatory bowel disease can affect various parts of the intestinal system. The kidneys are a major target of immune mediated, immune mediated diseases. And of course, lungs with asthma and uh, emphysema and so on. And some forms of inflammation are very indiscriminate in the way they target disease in that they target all kinds of organs uh, throughout the body. And what I'm talking about there is systemic lupus erythematosus or sepsis and infection. And so this is really the rationale for what we do, what we, why we do what we do, is that inflammation encompasses an enormous number of conditions. And when we put all these conditions together, they have the, the effect of shortening lifespans and or severely impacting the quality of life of our patients. And so these patients that are treated by the clinicians in our hospital, they often require lifelong treatment. And these treatments often have detrimental effects all of their own. And so this means that there's an enormous unmet need for developing better targeted, more effective therapies to reduce, uh, to keep these patients alive and to improve their quality of life. So we at the Center for Inflammatory Diseases have that as our rationale. Uh, as if for those of you that attended the uh, initial presentation by Professor Eric Morand, Eric made a, a, a great deal about the interaction between both clinician scientists and basic scientists, those that, are, uh, that treat patients in the hospital and those that work primarily in laboratories. And this is very much the case at our center as well. Many of our laboratory heads are headed by physicians who look after patients with rheumatological and, and renal conditions and, and, so, and other forms of inflammatory disease. And others of our laboratories are headed by basic scientists with uh, training in uh, scientific techniques. And together we work together to really try and uh, push this concept further. Our research examines the mechanisms of inflammatory diseases of the kidney, the brain, the joints, the skin, the liver and the lungs, blood vessels, infection, and indeed uh, conditions such as lupus, which affect many of these organs all at the same time. 
our approach is to use a combination of patient-based observations from uh, uh, patients that are attending Monash Medical Centre, as well as state-of-the-art laboratory-based experimental approaches. Now, in, com in sort of congruent with uh, the wide array of diseases that are, uh, inflammation can be involved in, this is an illustration of how the teams within Centre for Inflammatory Diseases cover many of these conditions. And so we have uh, researchers such as Associate Professor, Professor Connie Wong, who works on inflammation of the brain. We have uh, researchers such as Alex Bobbick here, who works on cardiovascular disease. Uh, Bill Sievert, who used to be the head of uh, gastrointestinal, uh, gastrointestinal Enterology at Monash Health uh, works on liver disease. Dr. Ursula Norman works on skin inflammation. We have a large group uh, working on systemic lupus erythematosus, led by a number of people, including Eric Morand and Josh Uwe. We have lung physicians working on pulmonary disease, Paul King, and again, a large group of individual teams of people working on kidney disease. And we also have links with infectious disease, disease at Monash Health. So this slide doesn't cover all of our researchers in, in the centre, but it illustrates the diversity of the kinds of diseases that we're interested in. I want to direct you to our website. You can see the website here at the bottom of the slide. Uh, it has all of the information that uh, you need. Uh, you'll also see in the chat, uh, there's a link to a web page that has all of the projects that we have available for prospective students. You might be an honours student, uh, you might be a PhD student, uh, it doesn't matter, you'll find a project that is likely to be of interest to, to you in that list. I want to give you an idea about the size of our centre and these are all the people that are offering projects within our centre. Uh, and again, all you need to do is to go to our uh, uh, web page to see the links to each of those individual uh, people, look at the publications that they've generated, the type of re research that they're interested in, uh, and feel free to contact them, I'll contact them. Every one of these people would be only too delighted to get a, an email from a prospective student to talk about doing an honours project or a PhD project. Uh, they really are very keen to be contacted by you. So that's the centre. I'll just now talk a little bit about my own laboratory and then uh, Dr. Dragana Odebasic and Dr. Sarah Jones will talk about uh, the research going on in their laboratories. And at the end, we'll have a presentation from Catherine Owen Kumar uh, as a, uh, oh, you can actually ask her questions about her uh, time in our centre. So my laboratory is uh, the leukocyte trafficking laboratory. Uh, we are interested in understanding the behaviour of immune cells. Uh, every inflammatory disease that you can think of has roles for immune cells coming into tissues, uh, mediating uh, inflammation and then uh, hopefully resolving that inflammation. And to study that process, you can go to uh, efforts to fix tissues and cut sections and stain up cells and you'll learn that the cells are in there and what kinds of cells are in there. But we like to take the approach of using uh, in vivo imaging, putting a microscope in on these tissues and studying these cells and learning about their behaviour. And so we can uh, look at uh, different kinds of cells as they come in blood vessels and go into tissues. Uh, we can look at different types of cells in the skin as they migrate around, interact with other immune cells and so on. And in very unique structures like the glomerulus of the kidney, we can look at different types of immune cells as they interact with each other and mediate the inflammatory process. And we think this gives us a unique ability to understand how these cells go about mediating inflammation as well as resolving and getting rid of inflammation. We have 
projects uh, involved in looking at monocyte trafficking in the chronically inflamed glomerulus, uh, different forms of glomerular inflammation in an immune deficient mouse. We're particularly interested in this type of immune cell called the regulatory T cell because it has uh, anti-inflammatory effects on different organs and, and settings. And we have projects in, involved in that. And we're also developing an interest in uh, immune cell biology in the lung. In each case, using imaging based approaches to look at those techniques, uh, those projects. So there's email addresses there for us, for you to contact us. And please, as I said, feel free to drop us an email. I'll now hand over to Dr. Dragana Odabasic for her to take us through her uh, lab and tell me when to advance the slides, Dragana. Okay, cool. Um, thanks, Michael. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, cool. So um, I'm basically just going to be presenting uh, about the group that um, I belong to, um, it's the Autoimmune Kidney Disease and Vasculitis Research Group. And um, Michael has already mentioned this, but I'll just um, repeat again. Um, senior leaders are um, clinician scientists, Professor Stephen Holdsworth and uh, Professor Richard Kitching. Um, and basically autoimmune kidney disease and vasculitis, which is inflammation of blood vessels, are severe diseases which have at the moment very limited treatment options. Um, and our group focuses on understanding how uh, the innate and adaptive um, immune responses injure the kidney. Um, this is so that we can develop therapeutics that can treat the disease, but while at the same time leaving our protective immunity against pathogens and cancer intact. And the research we do is very cutting edge, very immunology focused and very highly translational. So it's very likely to lead to sort of clinical trials, um, which we already do here at Monash Health. Um, the research involves um, a unique animal models that we have developed ourselves. Uh, we do uh, various functional studies, advanced imaging, um, and this is also in combination with um, assessing patient samples. Uh, which we have uh, direct access to through our um, clinicians. Um, we are very highly productive and we, we publish in, in top journals in, um, encompassing various fields, including general science um, and mainly nephrology and immunology, um, and some of the top journals like Nature and PNAS and Blood. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So it was it's sort of a little bit split up into the two groups. There's the um, uh, the group that's led by Professor Richard Kitching and um, there's a, a postdoc in his lab, Dr. Malia Alakan, and they've got a few projects um, uh, which look at designing um, improved treatments for anchor associated vasculitis. This is caused by autoimmunity to myeloperoxidase. Um, they're also more recently looking at um, how uh, cytomegalovirus can affect the severity and progression of kidney disease. Um, and they're also looking at another type of uh, vasculitis, which is called, caused by autoimmunity to um, another neutrophil protein called proteinase 3. And they're trying to look at um, or investigate the mechanisms of loss of tolerance in that disease. Sorry, I'm just answering a question in the chat. Ah, oh, right, sorry. Page down. There we go. Okay. Um, and then the other group um, is uh, led sort of by Professor Stephen Holdsworth, um, and that, that's the group that I belong to. So there's three postdocs um, in that group. There's myself, there's Dr. Kimo Sullivan, and there's also Dr. Um, Fogan. Um, and we sort of do a little bit of um, different projects, um, looking at both innate and adaptive immunity. Um, I've got some projects looking at um, novel cellular therapies for autoimmune vasculitis, looking at things like tolerogenic dendritic cells, stem cells, and um, various immature myeloid cells. Also looking at um, the novel role of um, antiviral factors, which are type 1 interferons in our disease as well. Um, Kim, she um, is studying... Um, neutrophil extracellular traps or NATs in autoimmune vasculitis. So she's got projects available there. Also, she's um, got projects looking at modulating the function of neutrophils in autoimmune vasculitis. 
um, Dr. Po Yigan, uh, she's got projects available looking at the role of um, another type of immune cell in autoimmune respiritis called mast cells. And she's also got other projects looking to restore tolerance in autoimmune vasculitis. Uh, but this is not a complete list of um, projects that we have available. Um, you just need to contact us if you want to talk about other projects. And we also have um, scholarships and top, top parts available in our lab. So just yeah, feel free to contact us if you have any questions or if you're interested. Thank you. Thanks, Dragana. And now I'll just uh, give Sarah Jones from the Rheumatology Research Group the floor and let Sarah tell you about her, lab her laboratory. Thank you, Michael. Um, so we have a fairly large group and I will tell you about the diversity in our group soon. In our group, we have a couple of streams of research. So the top stream here is uh, really lab-based research. We strive to understand the basic processes in immunology that go wrong to bring about autoimmune disease, particularly lupus, uh, but not restricted to lupus. Um, we're able to test out the in the Well, Sarah, we lost, we've dropped, lost you there a little bit, Sarah, that last sentence. Am I back? Yes. Okay, joys of Zoom. So we can test our hypotheses in um, our large bank of clinical data and patient samples, and we can lead to, uh, we, we generate discoveries that end up with identifying therapeutic targets and biomarkers that are clinically useful. So the other stream is the clinical research. Um, this is a large group as well. This is really driven by the clinicians in our team identifying the exact clinical needs then turning to um, Sarah, maybe, can you maybe just turn your camera off because we're, we're just struggling to pick you up a little bit. All right. Am I back? Yes, sorry. Sorry about that. I hear you. I live in the hills. We're quite patchy out here. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, an exceptional database of clinical data and a huge biobank of patient samples. Um, and we're, we're world leaders in that regard. So this can help us um, help create new learnings, uncover fundamental understandings that can change the way uh, we treat patients and make huge policy and practice um, changing learning. So, Michael, if you're able to click through. Yep. So the real strength in our group is that these two streams are linked. We have strong links together, linking the basic lab research and the clinical research. And the team's made up of uh, basic biology scientists, rheumatologists. We have PhD students, who are science students, and physicians, PhDs. And likewise, the same for honours students. Uh, we have bioinformaticians, mathematicians, and research nurses. Um, I think there are a couple more clicks, Michael, before the next slide. So we welcome all types of students. Uh, and if you are interested in anywhere, um, in a project anywhere along this sort of spectrum, please do be in touch. Next slide, please. So our research in both the clinical and the lab-based um, arms uh, spans from fundamental science, translational research, clinical research, towards commercialization of our findings so that the findings can reach patients in the clinic. So click forward, Michael, please. So, uh, I'll borrow the words of a, a wise woman and say that our diversity is our strength and our unity is our power. So we have a very strong research base and if you're interested in gaining a solid foundation in translational research, please uh, contact us. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sarah. Uh, so just to finish up before we uh, uh, give Catherine the floor, uh, just some contact details there. There's the web page for the available projects. Or you, you can simply Google CID Monash and you'll find us quite easily. Uh, and you can see the various uh, email addresses there. So I'm just going to stop sharing so we can see Catherine. Catherine, there you are. So uh, uh, I, 
Has anybody got any questions for Catherine? Or maybe Catherine, you can start by telling us a little bit about your experience at CID. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you guys hear me well? Reasonably well. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so I'm currently a third year um, PhD student and my, pro my project focuses on gut dysfunction after a stroke. Um, and I'm specifically looking at the immune and nervous system changes um, that happens in the gut that leads to infections. Um, so I've been at CID for around four years now. Um, I started my honors project with Connie and then I worked as a research assistant for one year. Um, and then I transitioned into a PhD with Connie as well. Um, I've really enjoyed my time at CID. Um, as you can tell by how long I've stuck around for. Um, it's a pretty relaxed environment with a great support network. Um, and as a student, I've had the opportunity to present at many seminars and conferences as well, as well um, as the ability to publish um, two reviews as well, which is a great way to share um, my research. Um, some of the things that actually attracted me to CID, um, were some of the things that mentioned before, is mainly facilities and the techniques. So um, the main thing that attracted me was actually the ability um, to image a piece of tissue or um, an animal. So you can stain it and then have a look at an immune cell and to see it light up was actually pretty cool to me. Um, and I've also learned many, many other techniques as well. Um, I enjoy uh, attending the weekly seminars because it's an opportunity for me to learn about other people's projects. And it's actually helped me understand my own project as well, um, which is great. Um, and as mentioned before, um, CID offers both clinical and basic research. So I got to see how um, my, my basic findings actually translate to a clinical setting to help patients, which I think it's pretty good. Um, and lastly, I think this is pretty common amongst um, most students here at CID. Um, we spend most of our time over at Clayton Road because there's heaps of dumpling shops and bubble tea shops as well. So mm -hmm. if you don't see us around um, lunchtime, you'll probably find us there um, having a meal or just, you know, enjoying time with each other. And I think a pretty critical skill that I learned um, being at CID is how to use chopsticks because of my frequent visits to um, Clayton Road. So if all else fails for me, I'll at least know how to use chopsticks. <laughs> you know. Thanks, Catherine. Catherine, there's a couple of questions that have come through on the chat and I think maybe we can, okay. you can help me answer them. So do we need, did you have an immunology background when, when you joined or uh, because there are people saying what happens if we don't have immunology in our background? Yeah, so I, I actually majored in immunology um, and microbiology, which definitely does help. Um, if you don't have a, a background like that, um, you probably just have to put in a little bit more effort into learning and doing background reading. Um, but it definitely does help to have that background, I would say, um, because most of the projects is immunology based. Um, but you do learn quite a bit as you as you go. Yeah, and we, um, we have a lot of immersion with our seminars and journal clubs and so on. And so a lot of people will get up to speed quickly once once they start attending the seminars and, and so on. Um, can, I, can I add to that? Um, I was just going to add that I just had a PhD student start last year and he didn't have a, a background in immunology at all, uh, but he's already picked up so much. And so it does take a little bit longer, like I've been saying, but you learn very quickly. So it's definitely not, I mean, it does help if you have a background in immunology, but you don't need to if you want to join. Yep. Yeah. And we have another ask, asking about medical students volunteering for projects and I think we, we've certainly had summer students, we've had medical students, uh, all kinds of placement students coming through our various labs. So I just encourage people to contact the, uh, the potential researchers that, are in, that they're interested in. Another question we have, what are the requirements for projects? Do we need to include anything when we email? I think you would should include your the kind of uh, academic background you have, what undergraduate subjects you're doing, whether you're a, a science or a bachelor of medical science or a medical student, those kinds of details and just have uh, uh, an indication of what, where you've come from academically and what you're interested in. Um, there's another question about welcoming undergraduate students. What sort of projects are available for biomed undergraduates? 
uh, there are a couple of uh, options. What there's the uh, immunology or the 3990, not just immunology, but uh, 3990 project in third year, which is a laboratory placement uh, where you do uh, sort of one day a week in the lab for a, sem a semester. I've had a couple of those students over the last year. Uh, that's a really good exposure and a, a, a sort of taste of what it would be like to be in the lab full time. Uh, so would you still be eligible if you're a Bachelor of Science undergraduate? Absolutely. Uh, as Kate Loveland said earlier, we can have uh, BSc honours uh, students doing their honours projects on site. Not a problem. Uh, you, you may have to do some coursework over at main campus, but uh, there's certainly no, we've had all had lots of BSc and, uh, students as honour students. Uh, summer internship opportunities. I think already, I'm sorry, Catherine, I'm just using your time to answer these questions. Uh, some summer internship opportunities. Uh, certainly, again, it depends on labs, uh, each individual lab, but I really encourage everyone to look, go to the website, uh, look at the projects that you're interested in. As I said earlier, uh, most of the supervisors will be only too keen to uh, uh, have a student who's interested in their work come along and see what opportunities are available and they will be able, probably able to tailor a project to suit your needs. Um, what else do we have? Yes, we can do Immunology 3990 students. I'm not so sure about de developmental biology, but certainly uh, different forms of 3990 projects we have done quite a few of in the past. So I think uh, and that's about all the questions. So we do need to wrap up right about now. So thank you everyone for attending. I'd like to thank all the panel members, Catherine, Sarah and Dragana for uh, their presentations. And uh, this, the recording of this will be available on the CID website. Uh, if you need to uh, come back and, and go through this again and certainly go uh, look for those web uh, pages and, and get as much information as you can and please contact us. Thank you very much for attending everybody.